Well, check out this video as people are trying to avoid an active shooter in a Cleveland church. Church Hall, active shooter, active shooter. Watch as at least a dozen people barricade themselves in a room, shielding each other from what they believe is an active shooter. What a terrifying experience for these people. Shooting situation right in front of the church. And in fact, one of the shooting victims ends up entering the church, possibly two of them. It's 6 p.m. Monday evening during a dinner for those that are in need. It's a Monday evening dinner for the community at St. Malachi Parish Hall in Cleveland, Ohio. There's apparently a shooting breaks out during this event. Uh, and it's somebody with a rifle and somebody with a handgun going back and forth. Just imagine that. First of all, what it sounds like, you can see in the picture here, there's several casings or you know that are on the ground. There's lots of evidence for the police. And but just imagine how that would sound if you were uh, in that church and the panic that it would begin to cause. And it did, as you saw in the video. And so, you know, basically it sounds like three people were shot in this incident and at least one of the gunshot victims fled into the church. In fact, the folks talked about that, that they thought he had either that the bullet had blown his shoe off and it looked like one of his toes was missing. I mean, it was a difficult situation to deal with. And you see these people handle it well. They fled, did their run, hide, fight. You know, they're hiding in a back room. Many of these people, others just fled. There was approximately 120 people that were inside of this event. And, you know, they're there for this to either feed or to be fed as part of this church uh, service event. And they're running scared. They're fleeing. They're hiding in a back room. And, you know, cars in the parking lot are getting riddled with bullets. And this gunshots are going off right out front. At what a terrible situation. And, you know, what do we do about this kind of stuff? What can we learn from this? If you're involved in a church and you're just attending, you're not part of security, you know, what are you going to do if something like this happens? I want you to be thinking about that. How do you protect yourself? And very important. Uh, it's same application if you're anywhere, mall, other places. What are you going to do to protect yourself in those situations? And, uh, you know, in, in the church, where can you run to? Where can you hide? These people chose a back room, a storage room, apparently right off of their kitchen area is what I'm told. And they started calling the 911, calling it in and got a pretty good police response. So what can we learn from this, though, further? And I want to challenge you, if you're watching this right now, whether you're on the church security team or you just attend church or even if you just go to places like the mall and other public spaces, if this were to happen, what are you going to do? And I want to make sure and challenge you in these situations. What would you do if you find yourself on the edge of an active shooter situation, just inside the doors from an event? And with a rifle involved, I mean, goodness gracious, we could end up having those bullets going through the walls and still be injured. So we want to be seeking cover, fleeing, whatever it, uh, whatever we think is the best in that situation. And, and so let's talk about lessons that we can learn here. You know, again, we go back to church security stuff we're talking about quite a bit. What events at church need security? What things do we need security for? And, and uh, you know, I'm a proponent of the fact that if the doors are open at church, there's a good chance we need security, especially depending on your location. If it's a rough area, for instance, this church, a rough area of uh, uh, Columbus, Ohio, uh, you know, what, what do we need to do to protect our church? Having somebody there at least protecting our church, hiring security, having somebody with a special weapons permit, concealed weapons permit, whatever it takes for your state. And I don't know all your regulations, but we need some sort of security these days. We can't just let this go. These people are unprotected. They're running. They're doing what they should, running and hiding. And they're figuring out through their conversations. And it seems like they've got one guy that's kind of leading the group. And they're determining that they don't believe they have the active shooter in the building, that they're outside the building. So, you know, but what are we 
what else can we do? What are we going to do? And, and I want to be challenging you through this situation. You know, covering the outside of our facilities, I'm talking about this all the time. We want to be covering, we want to, if you have somebody outside of your facility, then you can know what's going on and, and, and you're not surprised by it. And that's an important thing is otherwise you're just soft. You're outside, you're a soft target. And uh, uh, as you're inside doing your, preparing your food, those kind of things, you have no warning of what could be going on versus having somebody working outside that's armed or that's security, off-duty law enforcement, depending on where you are in the country, if you can hire them, if you can afford to do that, whatever you can do to have someone outside would be the best that we could do. We, we don't want to just be vulnerable and be ready to be attacked by someone just entering our church and surprise. We've got all of a sudden we have uh, people in our lap that might be armed or might be uh, have been shooters, whatever that is. We need people outside that are standing guard, standing a post. Uh, you don't see uh, military, for example, that is not having someone stand a post at, at, at the perimeter that's not out at the edge of a, uh, of a, a fort, of a military installation. They've got people on the outside. They've got fencing and they've got people on the outside that are standing watch. And that is somewhat what we need at our churches. We need people that are standing watch at the doorway, at the entrances, uh, and or out front where people are coming and going so that we have some protection, so that we're not such an easy target, and that uh, they can give us warning of what's going on or call law enforcement and begin to uh, start the process of protecting us or getting us some help. Thanks for watching this uh, short little clip and discussion. I hope you use it as a training event for yourself, your own mind, what would you do, or for your team. If, uh, if you have a team or a church security team. And I hope you'll like and subscribe and, uh, and continue to be a part of our community and our network.